Alrighty, I'm live. Never done YouTube live before, so hey, how's it going? Hope everybody's having a good evening. Got my drink here. Cheers to you. Happy quarantine. I, uh, I want to do a banjo lesson with you this evening and also talk a little bit about Camp Tomb Fox, which we had an open house for on Sunday, last Sunday, and it was really fun. All the teachers got on and taught about a 20-minute lesson, giving you a preview for what's to come next week, and it's going to be really fun. It got me super excited about the camp. So <clears throat> I'm pumped about it. If you want more details about camp, you can go to tunefox.com forward slash camp. But let's get into playing something. My thought for the lesson would be um, that I could go over some versions of Salt Creek, some different ways to play over the F chord of Salt Creek. I think that would be a fun way to, uh, you know, approach the the first YouTube Live we've done. And of course, I'm, I'm happy to take your requests. And if you want to learn anything in particular, I'm, I'm happy to go down that route, uh, or, or at least try to go down that route. So um, you can say say something. I can't see who's on here. So feel free to say, hey, and, and where you're from. And let me just play a little bit of Salt Creek. Salt Creek. I mean, several variations on Salt Creek. That's the way I play Salt Creek. Um, I'm wondering if you guys can hear me all right. I'm looking at the little microphone icon. Can you just give me, uh, say something in the chat box? Uh, if you can hear me, say yeah, or say, man, it sounds like crap. Just say something to me that, okay, Patrick, what's up, man? Good to see you. Okay, so I'm, I'm guessing you can hear me all right. So I want to talk about some ways that you can play over the F chord in Salt Creek. And if you don't know this tune, it's one of the most popular jam tunes. I mean, you know, when we go back to jams, people will be playing Salt Creek because for as long as I've been playing, Salt Creek is 
probably played at every jam session that I've been to. And it's just a great jam tune um, because the chords are, are kind of set out in the tune um, in a, a very logical way. And the melody is very simple and there's a lot of repetition in it. So we're gonna talk about that F chord. And usually the song is played in the key of A, you'll put your capo on. Um, but in the key of G, you've got dun, 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 ba, ba, da, ba, da, and then you've got da, ba, da, da, ba, da, da, ba, da, ba. So you've got that F chord coming up after the C. I'll play that one more time. So we got that's the chord progression for the A section. Now the B section is so you hang on the F for like a full bar there. One more time. Okay, cool. So that's the chord progression. Now we're just going to be focused on one part, like I said, the F chord. The melody during the F chord is... For the A section. So... The way I like to approach this is with chord tone. So if you don't know chord tone theory, all good, I'll explain it. Um, but the, the basic way is I'm looking at my F chord and I can choose when you know the F chord comes, I can choose any of these notes to start my melody from. And so for the melody of Salt Creek, for example, you're doing the melody here. So you're starting the melody. One sec, my dog has got to get his yayas out. Hey, Paco, Paco, easy. <laughs> um, you're starting the melody on the A note. So what if we took that melody and used it kind of as our, our template and we started on a note higher than our A note in the F chord? So if we look at our F chord here, our next note up is a C, and we're just taking this shape. We're not looking at open strings. We're just taking this shape, and we're going to try and find what it's going to sound like, a harmony, but it's just going to be an alternate melody to this F chord. So instead of playing, we're going to go. Now, that could be a valid way to play it. If you wanted to really truly play the, the harmony to it, uh, you'd play an F sharp there at the last note. So it'd be... Because if you didn't notice before when I played the chords in the A section, you actually play three beats of F. One, two, three, and then you switch to a D chord. So our harmony changes a little bit there. But I'm if you don't want to change to the, to the D chord, that's fine. You can land on an A on an A note right here. So it's, right? Okay. Paco, you wanna be on TV? <laughs> okay, that's Paco, he's my puppy. So you might hear him in the background. He's kind of, doesn't know what to do right now. So uh, we've got the, um, the, the harmony to it. That could sound cool. So that sounds pretty cool. Um, what if we did another note up the neck? Well, not up the neck, but up the chord. So our next note, we've got our A here. We've got our C, which we just started on. What if we do that same kind of template with starting on our F? And we'll do it single string first so, so you can see the movement, but then we'll transfer it to melodic style. And so that's gonna sound like this. That sounds pretty cool. So what if we go, and I'll show you an even cooler thing to do in there uh, in a sec, but that would sound like this. Okay. So these are just some logical ways to approach uh, playing over the F chord in Salt Creek. And, you know, you can do this in every position. You can do this over different chords. Uh, I, 
my hope is that you'll take this concept, this this way of like looking at the chord tones and approaching the chord tones and actually apply it to different parts of this song and other songs. Um, and for example, if you wanted to go over the G chord, instead of sliding in on the G, you could go up on the B. You know? So it could look like that, or, you know, so I'm, you know, sliding into that chord tone in the G chord. So we're thinking about chords and we're thinking about what notes are in the chord to help us kick off some improvisation ideas. And now, no, so now we're getting into more of advanced improvisation uh, techniques and I'm taking that idea and kind of extending it into um, more of a melodic vocabulary that I'm familiar with, if that makes sense. So instead of going, you know, to me that sounds cool, that's a great start, but where are we gonna take it from there and can we make it a little bit more interesting? And knowing that the D chord happens on the fourth beat is helpful because that gives you uh, a chance to figure out where you wanna resolve to. So uh, if we're using our chord tones, we can resolve to an A, I'm sorry, we can resolve to a D, which is the root of the D chord. We can resolve to the third, which is an F sharp, or we can resolve to an A, which is the fifth, or the seventh if you want to, D7, so that would be a C. But in this, we're gonna resolve to the root, we're gonna resolve to the D, so it sounds like this. So I'm putting a little chromaticism in there and there's a, a C sharp in there, which is not diatonic to the key of G. So it might confuse you a little bit, but to me that, that, that really resolves nicely to the G. So it creates tension to resolve to the G. But what you could do is, now you could go to a C natural there. Played two variations of that. And that's just a melodic style way of doing that lick. Now you could do it down there. The, the key to this is you, to use your ears and to figure out what sounds best to you. Because I could talk logical stuff all day, but it still might just go over your head. But as long as you understand like the starting point is the chord tone and where I go from there, um, kind of doesn't matter as long as I land on another chord tone in the next uh, chord, use your ears and that's gonna help you. Cause you don't have to do that. You know, you don't have to do that um, kind of scale or phrase there. You could do, uh, you know, you could do some different melodic variations on that, but you gotta work on your ears and make sure that um, you're following them and they're kind of guiding you through the chords here. Okay, so that's uh, a little bit of like chord tone theory, improvisational work. Now I want to talk about, um, kind of back up a little bit and talk about rolling through the chords and different ways that you can uh, get some cool chord sounds through rolling through the chords. And one of my favorites is, well, we're going to go over major sevenths, which is a kind of a cool sound. So like... You know, you can do, I'm in a way BSing here, <laughs> like, a, you know, going between that F and that E with a backwards roll pattern, and resolving to that D because the D chord is on our fourth beat. That's a cool way to, you know, turn some heads at the jam session. Instead of just hanging on that chord, which is also a fine thing to do. You know, and resolving to the D, you could go. Or, you know, just use that chromaticism. And that's all within a roll pattern. Or, <laughs> so there I, uh, I resolved instead to the D, because, you know, we're on a D chord, I went to an F sharp which is the third of the D chord. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking in chord tones still and resolving to, you probably recognize that shape, that's a D seventh shape. So. I 
there we go. So using that chromaticism and not being afraid of the major seventh and even the dominant seventh is a cool way to approach the F chord. And you can do that up, up and down the neck. So right there, that's an F seventh, F major seventh right there. So what if we did the B section and played uh, F major seventh? How would that sound? It sounds like an A minor because we don't have an F in the bass. But when there's a bass player playing or when there's a guitar player playing, you'll be able to hear that. And I'll play it with this bass note right here so you can actually hear it. You know, so that sounds... Sounds dreamy. <laughs> And then you could also do G major seventh there. What about the F seventh? What does that sound like? So that sounds really cool as well. F seventh right there. And if you don't know where I'm playing, um, let's start from our F chord. So F, back it up one fret, back it up one more fret, and now you have an F seventh chord. So I, both my index, well, my index is going to move, but my pinky staying where it is. And my middle finger is going to move back two frets. So now my index is getting that E flat, which is the seventh in the F chord, and my middle finger is grabbing the C. So that's our F seventh. You don't need an F in this chord because the guitar player and the bass player are going to be doing that work for you. Okay, so a great thing for you to do now is if you're not aware of where your F chords are or where your F sevenths or F major sevenths are, a great thing for you to do is to map these out on instruments so you have an idea of where you can play them. And so what I would do is just start out with your, your root and say, okay, well, I know where the root is. Now let me see if I can get an F seventh there. Okay, I got an F seventh there. That's cool. And now let's go up here. That's our... You know, first inversion chord, our D position chord, if you will. Now let's make it a seventh, a dominant seventh chord. Now, and, and it's really important to figure out how you find that. And I, I just went over it. You take the root, and you flat it two frets, and that's your seventh. And this is a quite of a quite a stretch. Um, so I will take off my ring finger a lot, like I just played. And then you got your bar up here. So find where your root is. Root's on the third string. That's my F7 chord. Now, you could also play it up here. That's also an F7 with your pinky out, stretched three frets up from the bar. And then you've got uh, your root again. There you go. So how can this be helpful in Salt Creek? Well, you, if you play the melody up the neck, using those F7 positions, I'm just rolling over them, and it sounds really unique and cool. Does anybody have any questions for me so far? I know I'm, I feel like my mouth is just going on, you know, it's on fire right now, just going super fast, so I want to make sure I'm not losing anybody. Um, and if you're just here to listen, or if you're here for the camp Q&A, feel free to ask your questions uh, about camp as well. I'm going to have a little drink. All right, 
So let me let me show that again uh, in a couple different positions. Paco, Paco, no, come on. fluid it can sound if you can learn your positions it it really fits in nicely to the the vibe of salt creek with that f7 and i also went up to a g7 there you know so the g7 also fits in the vibe of salt creek really nicely it being a bluesy song and having that kind of mixolydian sound patrick said is that always the way you get to the seventh by flatting the root two stops two steps is i think what you mean yes um you can always get to the seventh by flatting the root. And that's the dominant seventh. So there's there's dominant seventh and there's major seventh. And major seventh is kind of like the dreamy, dreamy sound. The um, dominant seventh is the bluesy sound. Um, and so, yeah, major seventh is by flatting the root. This is the best um, version of the, well, I won't say the best, but it's the easiest one to understand this root position chord because you have the root here, third, fifth, and then you have another root. So you can flat that root one and you get the major seventh. And then you flat that root one more time and you have the dominant seventh. And you have all four notes in the seventh chord. This one, you don't have all four notes in the seventh chord. You've got three notes. But out of your... Out of your main three positions, yes, flatting the root two steps is going to get you to the seventh chord, the dominant seventh chord. Uh, fifth string, five string capo said, I sometimes use a D minor in there for the F. Yeah, D minor is cool for the F. That creates an F6. I don't know. You probably knew that already, but that creates an F6 chord, and that's a really, really cool sound as well. Um, let's see. <laughs> That's cool. And you can also use a D minor in there for the G chord. So um, especially if you're moving to a C, D minor to C actually works really nicely. Um, and one one thing that I really like to do, and this is kind of getting off our initial topic, it's still related somewhat, but uh, what I really like to do in the chords is I'll do like a, a D minor nine there uh, right before that. Right before the C, so and that's a really nice kind of jazzy thing. It's a, a two five one in the key of C, so it's D minor nine, G thirteen, C, and so like in Salt Creek might not be the best uh, example of this because a C happens so quickly, but Blue Ridge Cabin Home. The world in the path of the You know, it, it sounds not like bluegrass at all, but it's a really, and then you can even throw an augmented in there. So that's D minor nine. And this, I'm just playing this on the middle three strings. And then I'm going to a G13, which is basically a G seventh chord. That's a G seventh. Patrick, and if you look at this, that's a G seventh. But if I you invert it and put the root on the, highest voice and put the seventh in the bass bass on the banjo is uh, relative <laughs> if, if you do that and then add your ring finger to the e note on the uh, fifth fret uh second string you've got a 13 chord which is a really crunchy sounding jazz chord and it sounds 
I love it. It's awesome. And, and it's crunchy because you've got this, well, for one, you've got tritone. So you've got the B and the F, and then you've got a minor nine, Ooh, which is awesome, or major seventh, I guess. So there's dissonance because there's the F natural and there's an E natural, and they're a half step apart. So you can hear it. There's two types of crunchy in that in that chord. And then what you can do to resolve to a C is you can make it an augmented by lowering your ring finger down to the um, E flat, which is the fourth fret second string. And that resolves really nicely with C. So one more time, D minor, nine, G 13, G augmented seventh, C. See how nice that sounds? Da, 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 da. Or what I sometimes like to resolve to is either a C7 or C69, which is. Okay, I don't need to use my ring finger, but. Um, so it doesn't even look like a C chord. Uh, so it sounds like this. Dun, 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 dun. And I'm singing the, the highest note in the chord. I'm playing the middle three strings, remember? So. Dun, 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 dun. That's resolving to a C. And for you folks that didn't want a jazz lesson this evening, I'm I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it just kind of went there. <laughs> yeah, so it's a really nice sound. And um, you can do it in the key of G too. So what would that be? That would be a two five one in the key of G, which would be A minor nine, and then. D13, D augmented seventh, G major, nine, or G69. Yeah, so I'm not going to say I'm a jazz musician, but I... I have studied this stuff a little bit and I really love the sound of it and incorporating it, incorporating it into bluegrass is um, another thing that I'm still working on. All right. So um, let's talk about camp a little bit because I am really, really pumped for the online version of Camp Toon Fox. We did have a in-person event scheduled for May 13th through 17th. That was going to be incredible, but instead of um, doing it with, you know, everything going on in the world, we decided to make it a online event. And we have the same teachers, Tristan Scroggins and Casey Campbell, Campbell teaching mandolin, Kenny Smith and Chris Luquette teaching guitar, BB Bowness and Bing Cracker are teaching banjo. I am super excited about it. And I want to know if anybody here is going, I see there's 14 people on. So is anybody coming to camp? Uh, you can just say I am or don't say anything at all. But uh, if you aren't coming to camp, I would love for you to check out the uh, website. It's tunefox.com forward slash camp. And if you have any questions about camp, it's a great time for you to ask it now. I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Basically, the schedule is going to be the morning is going to look like this. So we have a music mindset class, which is like kind of an embodiment class, getting a uh, developing a clear mind, developing uh, skills to get in your body so you can start to absorb uh, or better absorb the stuff in camp. And that's led by my wife, Emily Sullivan, who is an amazing um, teacher of Franklin Method, an amazing teacher um, for some some incredible people in the um, in the business world. But she also has helped me a lot with in feeling more inside my body and also clearing my mind, not just doing meditation, but um, imagery text techniques and, and other things. And she's going to be leading classes uh, at 1030 each morning of the camp. So that's going to help you hopefully get in your get in your body a little bit more and get the thoughts. You know, if you watch the news a lot, get those out of your head and become clear and focused for camp so you can in absorb as much as possible. So we're going to do that in the morning. And then the first class is um, around 1130. It just depends on your instrument. We've staggered the instruments. So um, they're not at the same time. So if you want to take more than one class, you can 
or well, more than one instrument. You can take more than one instrument and also attend all of the classes that you want to attend. But if you can't attend all of the classes, they will be recorded. So you can go on the student portal, which we are setting up, and you can go find the recording. We'll be doing Q and A's in the evening. Oh, before that, uh, we are going to have two classes every day. So you'll have your your first class, which will be um, with one of the teachers. Uh, so if you're taking mandolin, you'll take your first class with either Tristan or Casey. And then the second class, after a short break, will be with the other teacher. And then in the evening, the first night, Friday evening, is going to be with just the instrument of your, the instrument that you chose to study. So it's just going to be, you know, Casey and Tristan that night if you're studying mandolin. And they'll treat it as a concert slash Q&A. So you'll get to hear them play some and answer your questions about picking, about performing, ranging, what have you. And then the Saturday, relax, have a drink, and enjoy a conversation with all of the teachers about performing. That's I'm really excited about uh, the Q&As because I think they're going to be super fun um, to, to listen to all the teachers talk about their experiences, learning music, and um, – and performing music and writing because all of these all these teachers are amazing composers as well. So it's it's going to be super cool. I'm I'm excited to learn a bunch myself. And uh, you can ask your questions as well. So that's the rundown of the schedule. Um, I'm going to post the actual topics. We have all the topics from the teachers. Uh, so I'm going to post those soon on our blog and I'm going to send some emails out about that. But does anybody have any for enrollment is May 14th. So if you haven't signed up, go sign up. We'd love to have you. And if you have any questions after this, you can always email me at camp at tunefox.com. So yeah. I'll wait for a second. Maybe I'll play something else for you so you can have a little time to type in your questions. Shady Grove. Patrick said, well, is we are going to have the PDFs and the um, files that they send to me. I'm going to actually upload them to our platform. So you'll be able to practice with 
their downloads on our um, on our platform. So you'll be able to actually slow it down, speed it up, um, loop sections. You'll be able to use ToonFox with the material that they give us, which I am very excited about that as well. And we'll send out the downloads as well to the to the students every day. So um, you know, BB's already sent me a bunch of hers and. I've asked all the all the teachers to send me the the PDFs and the um, I'm, we're using XML files uh, for <laughs> we don't need to go into that but we're using the some specific files to upload to our server so you can actually um, play with ToonFox. Thanks for hanging out with me, y'all. Uh, this was fun, and if you have any questions about camp, just email me at camp at toonfox.com. Would love to see you there. Details are at toonfox.com forward slash camp. It is going to be a really fun time, and you can sign up for as many instruments as you want. We're only offering guitar, banjo, and mandolin, but sign up for all of them if you want to and study with these amazing teachers. All righty. So see you at camp. Later. <laughs>